Yo, what is going on YouTube? This is your boy Comrade Spike. Back again once again, people today, people today. We have a Comrade Zero One Real X Time movie review. And I this movie was awesome. And it, it's a it's a Comrade. It's a movie. A lot of times the movies are pretty pretty dope. And uh the villain for this movie was amazing. The choreography, the the fight choreography, oh my god. The fight choreography, the just the, the camera work, the visuals, everything visually in this movie looked really good. Like the CGI didn't look that bad. It really didn't. The the, the uh, excuse me. The chase scene with Jin when he's flying from these jets, like it looked really cool. And the concept of this movie it it, it dials it, it dials back to it, it dials back to a lot of things that were happening during the show, but also happening like in the background. Like we deal with uh, nano machines in this uh, in the episode. You can do it nano machines in this movie. That's why all that red stuff's coming from there. Basically, uh, nano machines. We get a new form for zero one in this form, but it's more like he only uses it once, and it's more like a rampagey kind of just like. It's different from when Auditor became the Ark. It's it, this form is just mostly just like rampage. Like he, only thing he says is like destroy and all kind of stuff. He's infected by the the nano machines in this in this movie. Well, for this short period, why he uses this form? So, yeah, like a Azu's back. Of, of course, she's back because she's trying to make new arcs. She's trying to make new arcs, and our villain for this movie is S or Essa. Well, I'm calling him S, but he, it's just ES. Um, they said his real name, but I don't, I don't remember. But yeah, his he yeah, he's the uh, he's the guy that showed up in the uh, in the he was the guy that showed up in that little short uh, little uh, after credits kind of scene little thing what we had at the end of zero one. So yeah, he is Kamen Rider Eden or Aiden. They say Aiden, but uh, he is Kamen Rider Eden, and he's dope. Like him, him fighting zero one. These fights are like I said before. The visuals are great, but basically the story is we're kind of just thrown into it. Like there's really like no build up to like zero one, like or build up to Auditor Auto meeting him or anything like that. We're just thrown into it. Like it's it's like, it was like there was another movie and then and then that movie ended on this point and then we starting back from that movie because I was like, did I miss something? Is there something that I missed? Because he just showed he just. We just thrown into this fight, and uh, it, the the fight when you know when Otis was fighting him, it feels like a final fight. It feels like I was, I felt like I was like watching like the last scene. But he does beat Otto in this uh, in this opening scene and stuff like that. He's basically um, basically S wants to end the world. He basically he wants to end the world by using he's uh, he's using one of um it's uh. Oh man, it's a Thouser's weapon. It's Thouser's weapon, his main weapon, that drill sword looking thing. He's using that and he has it stuck in like he has it like stuck in this pedal in this uh in this podium and they're in like the middle of this big like stadium, right? So he's he's he basically gives the world like it was it said fifty hours. It said fifty hours before the world ends and when the clock strikes zero, he's gonna stab this thing into the ground, basically into the podium, and then it's gonna like basically kill everyone on Earth, essentially. And him and all of his disciples, or the humans that joined him, which was really messed up to me because there was a lot, there were a lot of human people that joined him. They're wearing like these white and red cloaks and stuff like that. And basically, he was gonna do that, and all him and his disciples were basically gonna rebuild the Earth, right? And he's gonna be like new arc, and Azu's gonna be there, and all that crap. But yeah, so he's kind of like just here. He and that's basically what his plan was. So all of our writers are on this. All of our writers are on this. We get some new characters. Uh, they're not really. Um, they're not really human gears. They were more. They were basically just. Uh, they were like. They were like uh, nano machines. They were nano machine avatars that. 
other characters, like his disciples, the people who joined him, they were like uh, avatars that these people were controlling behind the scenes. So they're not really, they weren't really, they were there, but they weren't, they really weren't there. Um, these foot so uh, they were based like they they had like no, they didn't have any like differentiating form really. Um, they looked like these like green, kind of like I think they they were hoppers, but they they were like like these green bug guys. But they were riders, but they had, and they also used the same driver that Jin uses. It was just a different color. It was like a military color. It was like a military green, silver, and gold like basically. So. Also, these foot soldiers were really easy to take down, really. They weren't really like that. They they didn't really like put much of a fight up because we see our writers kind of like beating multiples of these guys by themselves, especially Harobi. Oh, my God. Harobi was so freaking cool in this in this movie. Um, But, yeah, we see that these nanomachines can also infect. They can also like infect things. They can also infect uh, technology because we see with Jin, he's being chased throughout this, you know, throughout the city and stuff like that. And he's, he's fighting these, him and Fuwa are fighting these jets and these jets are like not piloted by anybody. They're, you know, piloted by the, uh, by the nano machines. So throughout the um, movie, we see that there are, we see that they're throwing like, they're throwing like these canisters and this red mist comes out and this red mist is the nano machines. And when people inhale it, it basically makes them uh, pass out and then they got they kind of get like their consciousness gets teleported to like a cyber world like a world that's like basically like a uh, basically like a cyber world like a like a digital world digimon basically they they teleport to a digital world but they don't wake up there they're like everybody's like they're passed out in the real world and they're also passed out in the digital world so we said the only people we see that uh, Auto does get sent there as well but Auto also kind of planned this. Um, and I like that Auto. I like that Auto is very serious throughout this movie. Yeah, he still has his jokey moments, but Auto is a is very very serious in this movie and I like that about I like that. And there aren't that you know there are jokes here and there throughout the movie, but they're placed in good parts. Like they're placed in very they're placed in pla- they're placed in parts where it makes sense and that's okay. But this movie is very, very serious. We're talking about the end of the world here. We see people, we see like, it's, it's just mass destruction everywhere, but our writers are doing pretty freaking well. Uh, no one really gets beat like that. No one really gets like, no one really gets beat up that much. Like no one really gets beat to the point where they like dehension or whatever. What's well, up for one, what's up for one part with Fuwa and Hirobi when they were fighting those, uh, when they were fighting those like fighter jets. But, um, so S Basically, he wants to end the. He basically wants to teleport, basically end the world in the real world and teleport himself and all of his disciples to this digital world, and then he can rule over that world. So we find out that we, when Auto kind of gets sent there, he's he's he, he's in this world, but he sees all these people laid out everywhere on the ground, and he sees this one woman, this one other. You see this one woman, and her name is Akane, and Akane is also there. And she's conscious. She can move around in the world and everything. But we find out later that Akane is actually dead, and her conscious, but her consciousness was teleported to this world, right? And Akane is actually S's. Uh, Akane is actually S's uh, fiance. So he was. So he knew she was getting ready to die. The see, we see the scene where she dies, and um, she was about to. He was basically he used her as, he used her as an experiment, but we found out that he was trying he used a nano machine to probably try most likely try to bring her back to life. That's what he was trying to do. So, but yeah, that's basically what he was trying to do. So we end up seeing uh, we do see S end up using the uh, end up using the uh, the thousands drill his drill sword we see him end up using that drill sword and stabbing it into the ground he there was supposed to be two of because there's more than one there's yeah there's three of them there's one that was in the stadium there's one in the digital world and then there's one in the city well yeah there's one in a church in this in on the outskirts of the city so he uses the first one it blows up right it blows up and it kills like 
every single it kills all of his disciples we see dead bodies in this movie it kills all of his disciples everybody who, who chose to follow him they all freaking died right not all of them but a good amount of them and there's a lot of them a good amount of these people ended up dying so when they died his followers the people who were controlling the other right those four the there's four of them the four people who who are controlling the army and also like controlling like the uh, these common rider forms uh, basically, and we see that they get mad. One of them gets mad. He, they basically feel bad about this, and you know, they, they get mad that oh, S just betrayed us. He just killed everybody. He just killed our disciples and all that crap, and all. And he's not really trying to rule the world or whatever. He's just trying to find a way to teleport to this digital world so he can get to his like dead wife. So they get mad about this, and they ended up they ended up trying to destroy him as well. But I'm all over the place. I'm sorry. But uh, Izu, yeah, yeah, Izu's in this. Well, Izu, the new Izu, she is up. She does end up talking to old Izu, and it was really cool. We see that old Izu, her consciousness is inside of Zaya. Her consciousness is inside of Zaya, and we see that old Azu talks. Well, new Azu talks to old Azu about trying to talk to uh trying to find Aruto because while Aruto was stuck in this digital world no one knew where he was and they couldn't contact him and all our other writers are out here fighting all of these uh are basically out here fighting all these soldiers and these four generals essentially but we see that Hirobi he's off doing his own he's not really off doing his own thing he's just like there he's figuring out stuff as it goes along like he finds the he finds the main headquarters and he sees like the he see, he finds the the data space that has all of the people teleported there. He finds all of their data in there. He uh Azu, she really doesn't do much. She's just around essentially and she's walking around in this in this black wedding dress. Looks so creepy. But yeah, but she's walking around. She talk she talks to Ed. she's with S a little bit, but at the same time, it's like Azu really doesn't do much in this movie. Uh, she just she's just she's essentially just there. Um, she doesn't fight anybody or anything like that. Oh, uh, Aruto doesn't really encounter her that much. He like he we really doesn't encounter her like that. So yeah, but I like how but everybody's kind of like on the same page or whatnot. Um. But it's it was really cool to see everybody kind of fighting all these guys, especially Thouser. We also find out Thouser end up Thouser end up finding one of the traitors, and he basically goes off and interrogates this dude and tells him everything. And these guys actually created a brand new type of Zaya spec. And um, yeah, basically, uh, Thouser gets all this information out of this one guy who's telling him that you know about everything that S is trying to do or what he thought S was trying to do but S is trying to get to this digital world so Aruto, while Aruto was trapped in his digital world with Akane he did find that other uh, that other sword, the other drill sword and you know he tells, he talks to her he basically, Aruto, basically Aruto reveals that he could get out of this world anytime he wants to and he basically did because he teleported his. He basically teleported himself out of there. But he was like, "Yeah, I can get out here. And I can get out here anytime I want to, really." So I'm like, "Is Otto so that strong now, to where he could just, he could just jump. He could just get his consciousness out of digital worlds or whatever." It was dope. But other than that, Izu, she's you know, Izu's still trying to find Otto. She eventually does find him after Otto uh, gets out of the digital world. And then he actually does meet up with, uh, he doesn't meet up with everybody else because everybody else is still out here fighting. But while everybody's out there fighting, just the, they fight these soldiers. They're pretty easy to take down, but the nano machines just bring them back. So, well, it has a limit, but the nano machines just kind of just kept bringing them back. And I really did feel like these four generals were really going like, to kind of like be something. The only one that was like really somebody was like, uh, he was able to transform. He was able to steal. Well, I'll get to him in a second. But <laughs> I'm gonna get to him in a second. But we see that when Otto does get out of this world, he does meet up with S, 
and him and S do have another fight, but we see that they fight in the they fight in the uh, this abandoned like church, and we see the other we said it's an abandoned church, and apparently that church is where S was supposed to get married to Akane, so you see the drill sword it's there, and we see that you know while S you know S does end up stealing the um, the zero one. He st he steals the pro rise key that Auto used against Hirobi in the last episode. It was the uh, realizing hopper. He ended up stealing that, and he ends up using that. It puts it into the drill sword, and the drill sword is basically sucking all the energy out of it. And he sucks all the energy out of it. And he puts another key in there. That's it was like this. Uh, it was a red key, and this key was supposed to be the hell raising hopper, which is you know the form that's like kind of infused with like the arc and these nano machines and they talk about the arc like that but we never see a, like an arc driver in this movie we never see an arc driver we never see like anybody turn into the arc essentially it's just s was just basically just supposed to be like a like becoming an arc but he never did really and I really, I, and you know, he never did become an arc, and we never saw an arc driver or anything like that. The main villain, the main like thing was these were these nano machines. But after that, we see that ah, where was I? I lost my train of thought. Damn it. Um, after you know, after you know, Aud yeah, okay, Auditor, he runs up to this drill sword, and he ends up he ends up pulling out the uh, Hellraiser Hopper Pro Rise key. He takes this key out and he ends up, he tells, he basically like says in his head, like, sorry, everybody, but I don't think there's any other way for me to do this. So he ends up using this key and S is like, no, don't use that. That, that is too powerful for someone like you to handle and stuff like that. He transforms into hell raising hopper. He's fighting S. He's beating the crap out of S. He's like rampaging. He's screaming. The only thing he's saying is destroy. And we see like what's we see like what's happening on the inside. And it's one cr kind of creepy scene where he like his arm breaks. It like Autotoe's arm breaks, and then like his suit snaps his arm back into place, and it looked really creepy. And I'm like, ugh, this is weird. Like his like the nano machines like snap his arm back into place look weird. But the the real purpose of these nano machines was to they were they were created to um they were created to cure diseases. So S when before he was this, he created these nano machines because at first they were green, but they were infected by the arc's influence. When they were affected by the arc's influence, they turned red. And when they, uh, when he made these so he can use them on Akane to cure whatever disease she had, but they got affected by the arc's influence. They turned red. He injected them into her, not knowing this. He injected them into her, and then they start to affect her, and then they killed her. So yeah, that's why S is pissed. <laughs> so also S also he ends up using he ends up using them on himself, but they take his consciousness and make him a brand new body. So and there are some instances where uh when he's in his Eden form when he's in yeah, when he's in his Eden form, we see Otto fighting him and we see a part where Otto actually cuts off his arm and then his arm like regenerates and on the end when you look at him on the inside all you see is red like nano like these nanobots so yeah s that the s we're fighting isn't really the real him it's just like the nano machines with his consciousness um we said the only thing that was able to affect him before the hell raising hopper was metal cluster hopper when he actually shot a swarm he shot a swarm of the of the grasshoppers at him, and they were eating the nanobots. And I was like, "That's cool. I like that detail. It was dope because they, they were making it hard for him to regenerate. So he couldn't regenerate, and then Otto was able to get some hits and stuff out on him. But then that's when he used the uh, the drill sword and made the like made this big explosion 
and then shoots the frick and then shoots this beam down it blows up half the city and Autoto is just left there but when he while he what was while we see Autoto using Hellraiser Hopper we see that while this is happening Izu is talking well new Izu is talking to old Izu and I guess she kind I guess old I guess new Izu kinds of hit kind of hits like singularity to a degree because she ends up like worrying about auto like really really worrying about Otto and having starting to have emotions so yeah I think yeah she pretty much hit singularity in this movie but other than that she she um just when he gets ready to kill s he jumps uh auto we see like we see Izu she comes there she's in and she's transformed into zero two so yeah she's transformed into zero two and she stops him well yeah she stops him from fighting and stuff like that she pulls the uh she pulls the hellraiser hopper out of him and then you know they talk and you know she's kind of beat up and whatever i feel like i'm like dang man is Izu gonna die again this is gonna be this, this is gonna be some bs is Izu gonna die again so well she doesn't die either way she doesn't die but there she's, she's standing there and whatever and he has this talk with s and he's telling he's like, how do you know anything about her how do you know he's like i talked to her i was in the world with her she doesn't hate you and all kind of stuff right he's like oh and i'm like cool and then he ends up getting shot up s ends up getting shot up and it turns out his, his his other his one of the avatars uh yeah one of the writers i forgot his name but he was the one with the hair he was the one with the flow and beautiful hair right um he and uh, he's he's there he's leading a bunch of the soldiers and whatnot and he ends up taking he ends up taking the Eden driver I think that's what it's called I think that's what they called it he ends up taking the Eden driver and he he hitches up but he doesn't turn into Eden he turns into uh it was something skeleton it was he looked sort of he looked like a prototype of what Eden would look like because he hitched in a completely different way. Like, he hitched up, and, like, this skull thing comes up and, and bites down on, the, on his head. And he transforms into this. And then he grabs. He sets the timer again. But he says, hey, ten minutes to the, ten minutes till the war is destroyed. And I'm like, what? And then he ends up taking that. And we see Izu hinches up into Zero Two. And we see Otto hinching up into Realizing Hopper. Which, ooh, excuse me. I don't know the, the do we know the difference between realizing Ho realizing Hopper and regular uh and regular uh rising Hopper? Like I guess I guess rising I guess realizing Hopper is like a upgraded like his it's still his base form but it's like upgraded because you know it just it just was weird I didn't get it. Also, no shining Hopper and no assault Hopper in this movie. So yeah, all you all we see is zero two, all we see is zero one zero two, and um, metal cluster hopper, and then uh, hell raising hopper. But they're the only ones we see. We don't see shining hopper or uh, assault hopper. Which I'm so mad because they, it's just like they for, they just they just forgot about those forms. They just like completely forgot about those forms, and I'm just mad about that because I like those forms. Um, out of four. His only form is you really see, yeah, you see, uh, we see, we see base form, we see base shooting wolf, we see rampage wolf, and we see, uh, his gorilla, his gorilla, his gorilla form. And also with, you know, with, with Yaiba, she only got, she only got one, so, rushing cheetah and hornet. And, uh, everybody else, no one else really fights, uh, Ikazuchi doesn't do much, well, we see Ikazuchi's Ikizu, like in one scene. Yeah, like Ikazuchi's only he's only in one scene. You see him we see him bringing uh but yeah, we see him bringing uh Otto his bike. Uh Naki, she doesn't do much either. She's just like she's helping out, but she's helping out like not as a writer, but like she's helping out as a good support. You know, cuz she works for Ames now. So, you know, she's as just she's just there for like good support. But other than that, yeah, it's just her Robi. It's just her and Jin fighting. Um, yeah, it's just her and Jin and Fua Yaiba and uh, and Guy. That's 
and Auto and that's and Izu. That's really all that's fighting. But um which I say that like it's not a lot, but it's a lot. <laughs> but um yeah. Uh, after that we know the um they get like ten minutes after that we see him fighting this guy and stuff like that. We see everybody else fighting um we see Izu. We see yeah, we see Izu and Auto very, very coolly just like this whole scene where they're fighting this dude, it was awesome. Like the speed and the jumping and flipping it is the aesthetics was beautiful. We end up defeating him. Uh, after he get after he gets defeated and they stop the timer, all of the other uh yeah, all of the other uh foot soldiers that were around, they just fall down and they disappear, right? They fall down and they just disappear. And also what Eden was doing, what S was doing, it was happening all over the world. We get some English speaking parts in this movie. We get some English speaking parts and it's happening in New York and Mo- it happened in New York and Moscow and Los Angeles. Like we see these things all over the place and people from all over the world are being teleported to this digital world. So by the time they defeated the by the time they defeated him, not S, but the dude that became the dude that became like this pseudo camarade Eden. Uh he gets defeat after they defeat him, everybody starts to wake up. Everybody from the digital world starts to wake up. We see that uh S he gets S he does get tele he does get teleported to this digital world and him and Akane get married and then I guess this world's kinda I guess there's I guess they're still there or the world kinda like disappears. I don't know for sure, but they don't really show that but yeah, happy ending for S, I guess, and him and Akane, I guess, and um, yeah, that's pretty much. After that, we kind of clean up everything and kind of have some funny banter between each other and stuff like that, and you know, that's about it. And movie kind of yeah, movie basically ends off right there. But this movie does foreshadow. This movie does foreshadow, uh, Kamarada Metsubo Jinrai, which happens after the whole S stuff, but. I found that out because I watched the Metro Bajinrai movie before Zero X Time. I mean, real, yeah, Zero X Time. Or real, I mean, real X Time. So, and it made me, because it, it, you see the villain of that talking about S. So, yeah. But, um, yeah. It was a great movie. I like, well, storytelling wise. I don't really have any gripes that much. It was just, it was, but it was kind of that same generic story of turning a villain into a good guy. He was a good guy at first, but then he made a mistake and then he's trying to fix his mistake by doing something like this. But then the main character comes up and says, Hey, hey, this is wrong. And you're who your significant other would not want this thing that you're doing. You need to stop this. And then they don't hate you or anything like that. You know, the main character comes in and kind of changes that. And then our main villain kind of gets, kind of gets downgraded. And then like one of his lackeys become the, become the new villain. But yeah, it was, that's basically what was it. And I don't really, I'm so used to it at this point, but it's just the way they told it. And also I don't really, it's, it was just, I didn't like how thrown into this. Like there was no like real interact. There was no like real thing of like Auto meeting S or anything like that. Like, you know, stuff like that. Well, we got a flashback. We got a flashback of it's like well, if, you know, we got a flashback of him telling of him like telling Auto like I'm waging war on you and stuff like that. And you know, I, and then I like how I, I like how Auto was like he wasn't just like oh oh my god who are you like he wasn't like that. He was like completely serious. And he was like, "All right, bet." Like that's what that was kind of Auto's whole vibe throughout this movie. He's like, I mean, even though he, even though Auto, I hate how sometimes our characters just get beat up so freaking much. That's one thing. I, sometimes I don't like how our characters can just get their butts whooped so much. But it makes sense. It makes sense of why. But at the end of the day, it was dope. Uh, storytelling wise, it's very generic. It, 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 it's it's very generic um yeah but sto- storytelling wise it, it's very generic i mean we're used to it at this point it's what it's what camera kind of does you know how many times you know like how many times have we turned a good guy how many times have we turned a bad guy good you know we've done a lot 
So, well, yeah, overall, I give the movie a solid 7 out of 10. I liked it. It was pretty cool. Um, but other than that, you guys let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think about Kamara 01 X Z. Kamara 01 Real X Time. Uh, next up, we're going to be doing Kamara the Mitsu Bajinrai. That movie surprised the hell out of me at the end. And you'll all, if you've seen it, you know why. But uh, yeah, I'm going to see you guys next time. Peace out. Take care of yourself and each other. Remember, stay Henshin.